Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another vloggy vlog. And this one is a whole new segment, and it's called Bothering People. On this episode of Bothering People, we got Dave in his beautiful Brooklyn motorcycle cave. And uh, he's only been here for a few months, and there's a, a few things that are not his in the back there, which we'll explore later, but hi, Dave. Hello. These are Dave's. Is this your name? No. I can't, I, I'm no. Really, hello. No. So these are his motorcycles, and you can do whatever you want. You don't have to. Uh, I actually was kidding. You don't have to stand there and listen oh, as I mumble. Nice. But these are his motorcycles. This is his Beamer. Uh, what is this one? GS. It's a 1150. 1150. Adventure. What year is this baby? 2002. Oh, it actually says it right here. R 1150 GS 2002. And he's had this thing apart many times. He's had it like cracked in two deep in there. Uh, there's a couple of things going on right now on this bike. He's working on uh, some fueling situations, some fuel pump stuff. I think he's got some uh, lights over here that he's working on and then some tracking devices. He's also got some uh, really cool electrical tape right here holding his signal together. That's an official fix. Uh, that's a recommended fix for the broken signal. So would you say you're like uh because at first you I thought you were a Triumph guy, but then I found out you're more of a BMW guy. Yeah. Because what's the name of this garage? Oilhead Fix. Oilhead Fix. We're part of the Fix Motorcycle LLC. Right. And the thing is, it's uh, you could if you're local to New York City, you could probably get some real help and advice from this fella because yeah. he actually don't let his looks fool you. This, is, this yeah. is a professional yeah. motorcycle onesie. Exactly. So, let me just show you around. Uh, he just inherited this place from his buddy, so a lot of this stuff is his buddy's stuff, but we got a little fucking Porsche motor here and a lot of other cool stuff. Look at this. We got a cover from a G-Class, it looks like, right? Isn't that yeah, from a G-Class? Yeah, spare tire for a G-Class. Yeah. And right now it's like 40-ish degrees outside. And it's a little bit chilly. There's no heat here, right? There's no heat here. I'm Let's see. getting a little portable heater. Yeah. Uh, but there will be hot water. 43 degrees. And it's actually not that bad. But I feel like we're kind of like, I used to uh, the sacrifice. Because I've worked on my bike with like my hands just like, because you can't really wear gloves, like bulky gloves when you're working on motorcycles, like for warmth. So sometimes you just... Yeah, my, my, uh, my limit's 30 degrees. Once it hits yeah. 29 degrees, I'm too cold to work on Because Cause I'm known for stripping shit when it's perfectly warm. Imagine me trying to line up like a little like T8, little fucking knob. Yeah. So uh, enough about me. So how long have you been riding for, bud? Uh, I started riding in, in 2001. How many years is that? 23 years. 23 years. Well, I'm... 22. Yeah. I guess you're grabbing I'm my, 24. I'm yeah. making it seem a little better, a little right. fancier that way. You think I'd be better at it or faster? I, I, think, I think you've learned your ways. Uh, Dave and I actually rode once, and our riding chemistries were different. Even though we arrived at the same destination at the same time, uh, one of us was just cruising and loving life, and the other one of us was like, it's my boy, okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's just like, there's, there's nothing wrong with like going the speed limit and everything. I think I just sometimes uh, get excited, you know, by the noise and the, and the, the throttle. These BMWs don't sound like anything either. Yeah. Well, noise. to be fair, when we rode, you, you just rebuilt this bike and you were running her in. That That's why you did not want to go over the speed limit. Did, did you break the speed limit at any point during that ride? I may have. By like, maybe like lazy five miles somewhere by yeah. accident? Yeah, I, you know, I saw, it's a limit. It's not a, it's a, it's not a suggestion. It's not a minimum. It's a, it's a limit. You don't want to go yeah. faster than that. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, I had, what had I just redone? Uh, 
It was something major, because didn't you have like, didn't you have to like pop this whole thing off or something? Like, yeah, uh, I had the transmission out, I had the drive shaft out, um, I had just done the valve adjustment, uh, I had just redone the uh, ABS system, fuel pump. All of those things had just gotten Yeah, like, look, look at this front suspension here. I'm always like amazed at how, I mean, I don't want to be cheesy and classy and say like overly overbuilt, complicated they are, but how overly complicated are these? Uh, that's called a parallelever, uh, and it's a telescopic fork, mm. uh, and it is way over complicated. Uh, but the weird thing is, I don't have a lot of experience doing fork rebuilds because my forks are empty. What do you mean? There's, there's nothing in there? There's a spring in there. There's uh, um, dust what? seals. Those forks have dust seals. Uh, air? Milliliters of oil, and the rest is air. And they're Do you pump them up? Nope. There's not, they're not pressurized. There's no nitrogen in there other than what's in the air. Uh, so all the suspect, all the suspensing is done by this baby there that's right it's a it's a i like to call it a rear shock in the front yeah um, have you ever considered upgrading these um this, also do you do you need this there mm, on the coils no that could be that can go into the trash pile okay uh i'll we'll throw it out is. um it's just like you know that's bmw things like random zip ties tucked in that's cool but what was your very first bike? Uh, my first bike was, well, the first bike that I worked on was a CB550 uh, from the 70s, carburetors and points. And I never got it running. Uh, and then the first bike that I rode and drove and fixed was a, Ninja, a 1984 Ninja 900, right out of Top Gun. So that was uh, right when you got your license? That was my first bike after I got my license. Why? How did... Oh, that was probably like if that bike found you, right? That bike found me. And it wasn't like you seeked out the fucking Top Gun bike. Everybody knows how cool Tom Cruise was in that. No, bike. of course, but like, was that like he was he like your role model at the time or something? No, I don't know <laughs> the record saying that. Yeah, I mean Tom Cruise is. You know what? You could have a worse role model than Tom Cruise. <laughs> like out of like like. And if you did say he's your role model, I would not think you're weird, except for the whole like Scientology thing, maybe. Yeah. But that bike was that bike was close to twenty years old. Yeah. It was like eighteen years old when I got it. This bike is twenty something years old. Was it like clapped out? Uh, I did a lot of work on it. The worst part was the gas tank was rusted, so I actually had to re-weld the gas tank yeah. to get rid of the holes in it. Um, and there's nothing worse than having to clean out a gas tank to get every little. Thing As a young lad, didn't you it. just want to ride? Like, why did you fucking get? Why didn't you just get a bike that you could just hop on and ride? I heard rumors you can ride bikes. <laughs> yeah, I they just work. Rumors. Yeah, you're just like, no, it's kind of like my bike I got lucky with. You know what's funny? I was actually talking to somebody the other day about ownership of a Monster 620, and I have a, a spreadsheet where I keep all of the things that I've ever done to it, big and small. And I've spent more than double the price of the bike and its maintenance parts. over the last 10 years. Absolutely. And I probably have forgotten a few things, you know? That's how you know when you got a good deal on a bike. No, but the thing is, not a, like some of those repairs seemed like very like tragic at the time, but none of them were like, like game over situations. Like until your like engine block is cracked in half, I feel like everything you can like bolt on, move on, like put, plug in a new thing, replace the bearings or whatever the fuck, you know? The closest I got to game over was uh, that, that my transmission is actually a rebuilt transmission from an 1150 non-adventure PS. Uh, my transmission blew up when I was out in Arizona. So that's close closest I got to being done done. No, but but then you can just still just replace the trend. Uh, Put a new transmission in. Right, That's which cool. is which is not that crazy. It's not the end of the world, but yeah, I think I think I probably draw the line and put a new engine in. As I'm what I'm trying to do. No, but the thing is, I feel like my my the 620 is so simple where putting an engine in is. Oh yeah. Like a component, as opposed to a full situation. You also have an engine, and that being said, I've got an engine right here that's going to go in a bike. So I am going to put a new, en a new engine in a bike. Uh, yeah. I just don't want my engine to blow up on this bike. Yeah, I just don't think I'm like uh, resilient enough. 
No, I like I know for a fact that I'm not gonna start a rebuild of a bike and not finish because that's insane. You have to finish it. You have to finish it. And I don't think it's gonna be like pulling teeth. So I don't even know what I'm scared of. Okay. I, I think it's like I think it's the biggest project I've ever done, and that's why like I'm kind of intimidated of uh, starting it even. Uh, that's the problem I have with the uh, R100 GS. Is it's the biggest project I've ever done. I got to go engine up and frame up, and it makes me worry. Yeah. I've never done it before, uh, so I, I worry about it. That looks like the same. Yes. Yeah, got to replace your crush washers. You don't have to. Yeah, Actually, you can reuse it like eight from times. A steel crush washer to a nice. Compact. We have a crush washer for your swing arm. I have a crush washer for my final drive mm. drain plug, uh, and I'm going copper on these. A couple years ago, they they switched them all over from the I uh, probably steel ones to copper ones, uh, so I always buy the copper ones now. Mm. Several extra cents per washer, but worth it. Worth it. So why do you have uh, all these bikes here? You have a Vespa, you have this Triumph. Well, first of all, why do you have a Triumph? You know, I thought you were a Beamer guy. We we're talking about Beamers, and all of a sudden, I see a a Scrambler 900, if you will, uh, with adventure mirrors on it. Adventure, literally called adventure mirrors. They literally are adventure mirrors. That's right. So, what's the story with this? Uh, well, I realized a while ago because everyone everyone has their bike type. Look at the little fender here. Uh, everybody has their their bike type. Some people are sport bike types, and some people are. I don't know, Ducati monster types. Yeah, true, true. Just uh, Italian only bikes. He heard of them, heard of them. Um, and I realized a while ago, uh, my bike type is big heavy bikes that look like they can go off road, but are a huge mistake to take off. Is this, this thing fast? I've never ridden one of these. Uh, it's kind of, I mean. Would you ever allow me to ride this bike? Yeah. You sure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when it's not, there's not ice on the ground. But we have to replace the tires before I ride it. No, that's, you, that's, what, I, that's what I mean. You need a bike that looks like it can go off-road, but really shouldn't. Right. That's what these tires say. And it's like, it looks like it can go on-road, but it really shouldn't. It's really <laughs> best. What are these considered, like 60-40s? These are like 80-20s. 80-20? Yeah. I'm just like, I, They're yeah. The same ones on the Beamer. I've been using these tires since 2006. Have they ever been sketchy on you? Um, no, they're really predictable. They're really predictable tires. They're, um, I actually noticed with the Triumph, the one weird thing is because the Triumph is, I, I have the factory pipe on it, so it's pretty quiet. And you can hear the tire noise, just mm. like if you have a Jeep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, let's ride the Jeep around, you can hear the yeah. tire noise. So well, it's like all the electric vehicles nowadays. So it's kind of weird hearing your tire noise from these, and it's because yeah. they're these, these on-road, off-road tires. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of weird about them. Because um, technically, you have this bike for off-road, and you can set this one on for on-road, yeah. and just like put on like proper fucking uh, Michelins or Bridgestone Battle Act C32s, best tires ever. And, and, uh, but the thing is, uh, the Triumph is so much shorter and lighter that and I'm actually much more comfortable with it. Uh, it doesn't, I think the BMW handles better. So that, so that begs the question, why don't you get rid of this bike? Because I love this bike. I have this bike forever. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I sold this bike. Uh, and then it came back to you. When I, when I moved to New York in 2017, I sold this bike and then I missed it and I came back to it and I rebought it and drove it home. So why do you have a Vespa that you don't ride? And I can probably answer that question myself. Papers. None of your fucking business. <laughs> but uh, what a weird collection. Uh, yeah. Would you actually ride this thing? Um, no, right? It's not worth the time. It's not worth the ins inspection and registration and all that. I think I want to sell that one. Uh, I'm just waiting on the, some paperwork for it. And then the plan is it was uh, non running when I got it. Uh, so I got it. Uh, so I fixed it, tuned it up, got it running. So cute. Uh, yeah, and it's a 250, so it's got a lot of power. Um, but I will probably sell that one. Does it actually run now? Everything works? It runs and I just redid the throttle cables. Uh, so they were pulling a little bit. Man, I want to ride this thing so bad. Because I had some fun on it. I, I'm not sure which Vespa I rode. I rode a, a couple. Yeah. But they all were fun. I've never rode a Vespa I didn't love. It's just, it's just a hoop because it's, 
you're not really working at all. Yeah. And you're sitting like you're on a little stool. Yeah. Right? It's fucking dope. The funny thing is I get on I try to get on scooters like motorcycles and I throw my leg over. Right. People just look at me like, what are you doing? Yeah, like what are you extreme? What are you like? It's not that serious, guy. Just step in yeah. the frame. You know what can see up your skirt. That's right. And That's it right. Does, it, does it have a purse up there too? Wait, I had all these questions for you. All right, Dave, what is your favorite beer? Um, favorite beer? Yeah. Got to say Budweiser. What about your favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Uh, what would you pair a steak with? Butter. How much or do you like garlic? One to ten. No, you can't have second guess. It's like a one answer. Three of garlic. Three out of ten garlics? It's not my favorite. Holy shit, dude. You prefer onion to garlic? If you had to pick if one, garlic use, or onion? I'd, I'd go onion. You can use it in more ways. Mm. Like soup. Would you prefer salt or pepper? Salt. Salt on everything. Salt over. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's easy. I set you up. What about salt or sugar? Now that is going to fuck you up. Salt. Salt over sugar? Yeah. Jesus. Because you can, you, you can get natural sugars from other things. Doesn't make a good cake, though. But the thing is, can you get natural salt from things? But no, because it's going to bring other flavor with it. Yeah. Like every other salty thing has other like umami flavors. I was going to say umami, exactly. You could do like, uh, what could you do? You could do like miso or something that's really salty or yeah. soy sauce. No, but then it's going to have its own flavor as well. It's going to add more than just salt. Yeah. While sugar, you can get it from like all sorts of things. That's true. Plus... French fries with no salt, it's just a sad life. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, all right, this is a very serious thing. And I'm, I don't know what you're going to say. I think I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to let you answer. French fries, if you had to pick one, mayo or ketchup? I had to choose forever. The rest forever. Of the mayonnaise. See, like, I would like to say mayonnaise because I'm mayonnaise all day, but ketchup is so important for French fries. Yeah. I would go with mayo. You know what? Because I can make like chipotle mayo, I can make like garlic mayo, I can make like ketchup mayo. I can make, I can literally can add ketchup. ketchup. I can make like the fucking, uh, what do you call it? A Big Mac sauce. There, so there's a loophole is what you're saying. Right. There is a loophole. I would say majority of the people would not pick mayo over ketchup. Yeah, well there are um, not inventions. I wonder how long this video has been going on. Uh, maybe it's just off. Is it all? Is it blinking? Uh, it's blinking. It's blinking. All right. Well, no, we're good. Uh, so, uh, hey, guys, leave a comment below. How, how has this been for you so far? Because, you know, I'm going to upload this whole shit. You guys are going to hear the whole thing. Probably not watch it, but it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, all right. So, more questions. More questions? Uh, Why are you twerking a drain bowl? That's good. Is this your first garage that's your own? First garage that's my own. Because you've been parts of like other people's garages or you've been this and that parking on the street. Did you ever park on the street? Uh, I used to park the Triumph on the street when I first got it. Like between cars every day, during, like freaking out? COVID you put like a chain on it or whatnot? Put a chain on it. Put cover. It, cover. Oh, God. And alternate side parking. Oh, boy. So I guess I do know what Oh, you did. See, there I you did. go. There it's you go. It's annoying. Yeah, Dave is about to buy a pickup truck. He's about to be, uh, he's never had a car in New York City. And it's a unique experience. It's not that hard, I guess. But plus you're going to get a beater, which is like, well, not a beater, but it's not going to be like if somebody bumps into your bumper and there's a scratch, you're not going to be like, OMG. That's the hope. Yeah. <laughs> Torched correctly. Important stuff. Oh, we should refill this with oil while we're here. While we're in there. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Water. Look at this. This uh, final drive. And uh, yeah. Like and this is like your little speed sensor, isn't it? Diff in a car. Is this a speed sensor? That's, uh, yep. ABS. ABS. That's an ABS sensor? Um, that is the ABS sensor, yeah. Really? Uh, I may be wrong. No, I, I think that's a look. speed sensor. No, that's Because I have a similar one. No, that's just a speed sensor. Who knows? Nobody okay. knows. Synthetic 75-140 gear oil. Is that what you need? One, yep, 75 140. How much do you need? Well, that is... Just a good squirt. The, oh no. That's one of the lovely things about working on this bike. Best bike to work on. Is it a dipstick? Uh, you just fill it until it gets to the bottom of the threads for your bolt. Is that like the natural direction? That's, you that's just, what they tell you? This, you just put it in, 
And just like squirt see, in there. See if it's working. Until she's full. Find out it's not working. Realize you have to cut the tip off. Oh God. Um, you know, important stuff to do. Noob. I'm sensing mad noob energy right now. Uh, like you're giving mad noob right now. But I've used this before. And what happens is, because you need so little that like one of these lasts a couple gear oil changes. So I always put the new cap on to seal it really thoroughly. So Dave, what, what, what is the longest uh, motorcycle trip you've ever done? Tell uh, me that. The longest motorcycle trip, let's see if I'm on board. Think, make sure this is the right one. Um, because BMW tell you to use 7590 and they're wrong. They've updated in the last Dude. couple of years. So 75140 for the final drive, not the transmission. That is crazy. Cause I would just go with the manual, but. They, um, because this is what BMW tells you to use. Is that, that's working. Yeah, it's going in there. Uh, BMW tells you to use this now, but the manual tells you something different because when it first came out, they had a different recommendation and they updated it for the new. Is it going in? Yeah, it's going yeah. in. All right, so tell me about Long your longest motorcycle, motorcycle trip. It was a Suzuki SV650. Oh yeah, what year? Uh, 2000. 2001? Was it fuel injected? No, those are carved, right? It was, fuel, uh, it was. Cause it feels like it's like right around the time where they switched from carbing to I fuel injection. Fuel injected. Nice. I, think it was, I love those bikes. I think it was fuel injected. That's basically like a monster. That's basically like a little baby monster. It was the round run. Or not a baby monster, but like. Yeah, it's like a baby monster. No, it's no, cause it's literally a monster monster. Oh yeah, 650. It just happens to be Japanese. I had the plastic, it was the ass with the extra fairings and the extra headlights. And I don't have any proof, but I feel like Suzuki made a naked bike like that in response to Ducati and the popularity of the monster. That seems, that seems. No, but, but what was the trip? Uh, I lived in Connecticut at the time, and I rode from Connecticut to California, back to Connecticut. Oh shit, on the highways or back roads? Uh, back roads, dirt roads, highways, it was 11,000 miles for the trip. And how long did that take? Uh, five, five weeks. Jesus Christ, were you like unemployed or something? Uh, I took, uh... <laughs> like how did you, how did you do that? <laughs> I worked at a university at the time, and I took 100% of my vacation mm -hmm. for one trip. So I used no vacation. They allowed you to get away for five weeks in a row? Yeah. Jesus. Because I pulled off three weeks before in a row, and that's already asking a lot. You put like a holiday in there. Yeah. And then you're and then you're all set. That's kind of crazy. Uh, it was cool. Uh, I got but, you, accident, but, you've like, done, but you've done cross-country trip a couple times, right? Um, I did that one uh, there and back, including Canada. And I drove this. Uh, when I bought this back, I did this from California to New York. What was the accident? Uh, I, <laughs> on that SV. Um, the weekend before I went uh, cross country, I did a track day. And so I was like, had all the suspension set up, had all my luggage off, I was uh, at Loudoun in New Hampshire. So on my first day on the trip, I was up in Vermont, beautiful roads. I was like, oh, I know how to do this now, I did yeah. a track day. But I had a ton of luggage and a tent and a sleeping bag and all this stuff and the bike was too heavy and I ran wide and it turned oh, no. 220 miles into an 11,000 mile trip. You had to layer down. Laid it down, uh, <laughs> uh, hit like a ditch. Did your bags out. like fly off and shit? The bags were fine. Uh, the bike landed on my ankle, so I had a sprained ankle for the entire. Wait, how fast miles. were you going? Uh, too fast. Well, so what was the speed? I was probably started at like forty-five, and then I worked my way down. Damn. By the time I hit the, the drainage ditch, I was probably going like fifteen or something. Damn. So Damn. Bike landed on my ankle. I was wearing nice. Uh, but you continued boots. on like a soldier. I had, you know? this, I had this thought with myself where I was like, my two options were drive the bike home, borrow a friend's bike and continue the trip or just continue the trip or the right. two choices I gave myself. Right. So I just continued the trip. You just send it. Um, put a new uh, shifter uh, lever on. So obviously you didn't side. get injured. Sprained my ankle really badly. Couldn't but take my boots off for three You got better, right. Uh, yeah, I got better. I have a limp. Have had a limp for the- Since then? Since then. Oh my God. But it's not too bad. It only really comes out during the cold, wet weather. Was it worth it? Worth it. One of the best things I've ever done. There you go. Now I have a serious question for you. Very hard. I thought we were talking serious. Uh, how do you feel about Ducati? Tell me if your first three words that come to mind when somebody says Ducati. Uh, 
Rich engine spaghetti. Rich engine spaghetti. Those are the three I words. love it. Okay, so how do how do you feel about Ducati? Oh, they're beautiful. You think second three words? Jealous. <laughs> you can have one. Easy. Poor. Yeah, right. Get get a Ducati. Still want still want spaghetti. Uh. So. Okay, you basically, that, that was the most political answer I've ever heard. You basically didn't say a fucking thing. Well, because you're, well, you asked for three words. It's not a lot. But Ducati NYC, I got to be a little anti-Ducati just for the rivalry. Just no, it's true. Bit. It's true. Just so that. Well, true. I mean, I'm a fan, but we're not talking about me. You know, we're, we're talking about you. So you, you think, uh, do you think... Do, are, are you in the camp where you think what everybody else thinks, where they are a little overpriced, the electrics need work, they're really beautiful, but they're finicky and blah, blah, blah? Because that's like the common thing, right? Um, you know, they used to have engine problems, and that freaked me out for a long They always seem too nice for something I could own. That's like, it's like a sports car. But you have a BMW what, and a Triumph. What the fuck are you talking about? That's how they felt to me when I was younger. And I think that stuck with me. And the original ones, the lining to the engine would peel off right. during the break-in. Right, right, right. And that engine service, like clearly I do all my own work and that engine service of like, oh, my engine cylinder lining's peeling. Let me just fix that. Was like- No, but I mean, those so problems don't exist anymore, obviously. Yeah, but I'm stuck in the past. Do we think this is all the way full? The oil in there should be touching the bottom. I don't think it's enough. I think you need to add a little more. It should be the bottom of the threads on I this side. I think it needs to be a little bit more. And the nice thing about this is any extra just falls out when you put in the plug. Exactly. So you shouldn't, you should just overfill it. Send it. How's it look now? Do you want more? I, th I, I, like, I think it needs more, but I also, I'm at the I'm on I'm the overfilling camp. Well, the reason uh, there's also a vent up here, so it's actually overfilled. It will vent out the top. So uh, what what is the reason you have never had a Ducati? Um, I told you in my head, childhood me who has been in love with motorcycles since they were 12 years old, um, thinks of Ducati as that like I'm never going to own a Ferrari either. Right. Because it's the fancy thing that um, maybe I'm just too slow. Just too slow. But the thing is, you could think of BMW the same exact way. This could be any old Ducati right here. That's true. And you would put in the same love, same effort. Uh, so it's like the financial thing goes out the window. Well, it's the childhood me that believes in motorcycles. Never right. Did you always think you're going to have a BMW motorcycle? Yeah, I'm building a second one. So. Right. I'm always going to have this one and the one in building, and that's going to be it for me. So my days of buying new motorcycles are almost over. That is like the saddest shit I've ever fucking heard. What is wrong with you? Maybe what is wrong looking, with you? Maybe that's why I'm looking at Trump. How are you? What the hell is going on here? How did, like, that's oh it. my God. So the next BMW is going to be your last motorcycle for the rest of your life. And, and that's why now you're looking at trucks. And, it's and then... Better. Like, are you going to have another truck or is this going to be like your last vehicle for the rest of your life as well? Oh, I'd love it to be my last vehicle the rest That's of it. Life. Yeah, that'd be great. You really don't want to buy a new motorcycle at any point. I like old things. Are you going to buy a new motorcycle at any point? Uh -huh. Do you ever see yourself buying a brand new motorcycle? If, no. From the store? From like you go to the shiny dealership? The motorcycle store? Yeah. They have those still? Not that I know of. Uh... You know, the one, I think the one danger that I have is, tell me this is full now. Um, look at that. Okay, yeah, that's fucking full. That looks good, right? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, the difference was like a milliliter. Um, I know a lot of people who dirt bike now are into dirt biking. And do so you might get a brand new dirt bike. It would be new. Definitely you have to. Use bike. Definitely use, put in the used truck. Is, is it a matter of saving money? Like, why, why not get something brand new? Especially, like, dirt bikes are, like, since it's not going to be registered, insured, or nothing. That's true. It's almost like a toy. It's like you're buying a bicycle. Unlike motorcycles, which are also a toy. Right. But I'm saying, like, why not get a brand new crispy bike that you can just call your own? Because, like, the thing is, I'm only saying it because I just did that. 
That's which true. which I also say I'm never gonna do again because <laughs> I fucking spent so much money for no reason. But uh, where'd you put my hex head? Your who? Where'd you put my Allen uh, socket? I absolutely didn't touch it, you son of a bitch. I know you hit it from me. But so it's gonna be a used bike. Yeah, I'm a used bike guy. Um, because half the fun fell off my little shelf. Is to figure out what works. Is to figure out how, yeah, how they work. And, and uh, I like that part of it so much. I might get something new. And the, uh, I think of motorcycles as a hobby that just keeps giving. Yeah. Ride a motorcycle, fun hobby. Wash the motorcycle, fun hobby. Fix the yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. Shop for a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's, it's unlimited. This, uh, this bike gives me the gift of a motorcycle hobby even in the winter. It's true. I just get to work That's on a good it. point. Um, you know what? I feel like I'm gonna treat this almost as like a podcast, because like think about it. Because we're just like talking shit. This is great. Uh, but yeah, I hear I hear you. Like I actually had a moment like that when I was working on installing my belly fairing at Dirty Billy, right a block from here actually. Dirty Billy BK. Um, well, I was just like, and it was like 25 degrees outside, and it was like cold and shitty, and I was like, I'm in here just like 10 a.m. on a Saturday, happy as a clam. You know, there's something about it. But yeah, like I, I literally was so excited to uh, be sitting there, attaching my little fairing, yeah. drinking coffee, you know, like hanging out with your bike. And a lot of people are intimidated and they don't want to get into because like the, to an average person, like even to me, like I, I, we talked about earlier, like all this shit like is looking a little crazy. That's a little crazy. You know, there's all these extra things. Uh, but that said, if you slow down for a second, just bolts. Yeah, you just you can put it back together, figure it out. I think anything is super outable. So sometimes it costs you more money than you wanted. Yeah. That is true. So we did the final. That's it for the final drive oil. Yeah. Now I have to do the transmission oil. There it is. New crush washer. How much torque did you put on? A little eh? 30 newton meters. What, did you actually torque it? Yep. Oh, you son of a bitch. Yep. Uh, 7590 uh, for the transmission. Because if you do 75140 for the transmission, it shifts clunky. How are you filling it up and it's like vertical? I just, you just kind of squeeze it. It's coming out a little. Uh, actually, no, that was just a shadow. Uh, that's the nice thing about these is you just get the um, filler nozzle all the way in and get it at a tiny angle and then you just squeeze. You know what's interesting? We could, I could tell the temperature is dropping. See my breath now? Because I couldn't see my breath before. Yeah. But now I actually like. Yeah. Yeah, so it's real. It is real. Let's see. It was 43 before. I'm going to say it's 40 now. It's only 42. Oh. Yeah, so this is Dave's little motorcycle garage. And if you actually made it to the end of the video, Jesus, I, I salute you. Uh, but I thought it was, it was an interesting little place. And like we always say, once it's actually warm and you can just be here, it's going to be marvelous. I mean, it's not that bad now. And we have the door open for no good reason. That's but right. fresh air. And we had a neighborhood hat. Na neighbor. We had a neighborhood cat who right. came over here. Fatty slash boomy. And uh, she broke out. She's not here anymore. Do I get to do a plug for uh, oil head fix? Yes, please. Not okay. Now you have you have thirty seconds 30 se oh. to plug whatever you want. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! I gotta stop touching your bike when it's in the space. <laughs> it's not attached to anything. Yeah, I'm just like fuck it. Hey, I keep doing it. I just want to do a plug for oil head fix. All right, go ahead. Fix old bikes. Okay. That's 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 what we do. Let's do. All right. Um, well, if you guys have a is, is it like BMWs? Kind of like the BMWs. Uh, my buddy Airhead Fix does mm -hmm. their heads. Uh, he specializes in everything from the 50s to the early 90s, and I kind of take over with the oil heads from the early 90s until the late 2000s. And we do an occasional new bike. Um, so we've got the GS911 tool to clear coats and things like that. But How do you know so much about these BMWs? You just 
these this is what you love i like them and i'm cheap so <laughs> you don't want to spend money you do your own work and we that's what you say now until you get stuck with a job that's a total bitch and then you're like damn it i should charge this person two thousand uh, dollars well that's the it's Billing is weird because, like, electrical is a good example. It just takes forever. Right. And, and if you want to do it right, it takes extra effort. And just running wires and doing zip ties and stuff takes hours and hours and hours. And you can't build the whole time. Uh, but you're busy the whole time that you're working on it. So, like, yeah. that's, um, that's always hard to figure out how to bill. Uh, the actual last electrical job I did, I uh, just did for a friend. I didn't even charge him for it because um, I've worked on that bike a ton. Uh, but... Is this coming out? Yeah, I can't even tell. It's a weird angle. Plus, it's like you. Like the thing is, there's not enough angle for it to come out, even if it's noob. Yeah. Like. Anyway. Uh, no. So the rates are cheap. So they're like we're talking like ten bucks an hour. <laughs> wait. You, wait. Is it? Is it actually closed? Oh my god! I am calling the <laughs> fucking cops. I'm calling the cops. I'm having a beer. You're not even having a beer. Sometimes you just think that you got. And I love how you said like, "Oh, am I spilling?" No, no, it's just a shadow. And it's like, yeah, no, you're not spilling, bro. I don't think I spilled it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you spilled it. I feel like I should cut this part out, but I'm also gonna keep it in for sure. Oh, because it's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> Sometimes you're doing a thing, and it doesn't go exactly how you want. Like, well, no, but it's like, but the thing is, it's like the big production. It's like the lights, the microphones. Like you're not usually like, you know, surrounded by cameras. I'm not used to the spotlight. Yeah. Uh, I just like to work on old bikes. You're freaking out. Um, this is going to work a lot better. We're going to get a good amount there of you go. oil in there now. Um, <laughs> see. I was actually wondering. I was like, how much are you pouring in? Like the thing is just the whole thing goes in. Um, it's a full liter goes in. You can see also how disgusting this is. Uh, this comes out clear. Uh, this is not clear anymore. No. Um, it's got some colors to it and it smells awful. Hey, look at that. Much better. So this is how you fill it. It looks a lot like it did before, but now liquid actually comes out of it. Yeah, and you're actually squeezing the bottle. Notice how you actually are putting a dent on that plastic vessel. Yeah, you know. Uh, so now, now we might, it will leak. But the great thing is this also is not overfillable because uh, it will start just coming out through the threads and that's when you're done. There you go. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's That's why I love the oil head vex. We definitely know what we're doing 100% yeah. of the time. And it's like you figure it out. Plus, it's like problem solving. How long did that take? That took like, like two minutes to problem solve. Yeah. And even if you're billing at that rate, you still are problem solving really quickly. Fast problem solving. I can solve, I can solve a problem with a whole effect sensor just as quick as I can solve a problem with a bottle. Thank you for allowing me to uh, intrude your personal space. And you know what? The problem is, I'm gonna be back. I'll be back again. Well, we're gonna put a motor in a Ducati. Uh, so anyway, like leave, leave some comments below, because uh, I'm gonna bother other people, but uh, leave some questions below. Like maybe I didn't ask the right questions. And, uh, and if you have some ideas or questions or whatever about BMW specifically, and you ask them, you might get an answer. We'll get some answers. Yeah. All right, thank you for watching. Bye now. Bye, Ducati NYC. Bye, bye, Mr. Oilhead Fix, aka D. Okay, bye.